Uh, okay, so uh, welcome to, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the, the presentation. So I will be presenting our work on developing a model framework for content-centric networks. So my uh, talk will look uh, at the motivation why we di uh, did this. What is content-centric networking? Uh, the model framework that we developed and a very simple evaluation. We just uh, developed the model, finished developing the model. So we sort of have a very simple evaluation and then the summary and what we plan to do uh, for, the, for the future. So the first is the motivation. Why are we doing? So it is like twofold. So if you look at these two graphics, I'm exactly not sure whether they are very clear to you, but in the first one, you see how content generation has increased over time, right? So we are talking of, of content that is generated every year that is in zettabytes, right? This is, um, uh, 10 to the power 21. So, so much of content is generated, right? And on the other graphic, you see that most of these communications, right, uh, in, in, in current networks related to retrieving this, this content that is generated. So, if you look at the whole picture, you see that majority use is simply moving content in internet, right? You have all these uh, sites starting, you know, from Facebook to, to YouTube, to all these other streaming uh, uh, platforms. So it is all about content. So the solution that people have discussed uh, for some time is why don't we use information centric networks, right? There are other solutions that are more or less, you know, sort of trying to build on existing uh, technologies, but information-centric networks are a sort of a clean slate solution, right? Where simply you, you start from scratch and identify an architecture to serve that, right? Because the, 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 the thinking is that the existing networking infrastructure or, or the architectures are unable to handle how we use networks today, right? So hence the use of information-centric networks. So why uh, information-centric networks, right? Uh, uh, or uh, what is the importance, right? So, and, and you know, finally coming down to why did we uh, develop the model framework? So for information-centric networks, there are many architectures, right? Uh, but, uh, and, and IETF has also got involved because they have seen the importance of, of uh, uh, ICNs. And there is in fact uh, uh, an ICN uh, research group called the ICNRG, which is looking into all things related to uh, information centric networks. And recently they have published a number of standards Right, and there are of course plenty of proposed standards. The main architecture that IETF is is considering is CCN. Right, there were many architectures, but they become uh, became automatically obsolete because uh, of of the way they work and 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 so on. So the current architecture that IETF has accepted and is is following is CCN. You may have heard about NDN, uh, Named Data Networking. So NDN is simply a derivative of CCN, right? So the, 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 the architecture is the original architecture for information-centric networks uh, was, was referred to as CCN, right? The, 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 the one that IETF accepted. Of course, there were other architectures like donor, uh, data-oriented network, net inf, uh, network of information. There were many architectures, but all those architectures 
don't they exist but you know uh, nobody does any research in in any of these anymore okay uh, uh, Giovanni, you have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, just a, a, a little clarification because I, I, am, I don't know uh, information centric networks, so I, I am probably doing a, a, a very stupid comment. Um, I mean, uh, there is no stupid questions, there is only stupid answers. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, um, fr from what I'm, I, I understand, information centric networks uh, refers to everything so it, it, it can be text can, it can be video streaming it can be traffic on the social networks right uh, yeah yeah in the, in the sense that information centric networks is is a net is a networking architecture similar to ip okay so you know in ip you have this uh, four layer architecture right yeah. so you have uh, applications at the top icns have applications you know, information centric applications, right? It can be anything, you know, they have to only cater to the information centric networking way of communications, but they will be the same applications, email, okay. uh, video streaming, uh, web surfing, uh, all that, it, it'll be similar. So basically then, lower yeah. layers of, of the protocol stack, let's say, uh, yes. will take care of packets, uh, by exploiting the information provided by the application? Yeah, it'll, it'll absolutely. So the lower layers, now in, in, in I, I will also go to the architecture uh, in, in a few slides so that I will talk about the architecture. So uh, maybe uh, Giovanni, I will go there and I can explain okay. exactly what, Thank you. what you want. Yeah, this is also a question that comes to people's mind. So, so NDN is one of them, but but NDN is simply CCN, right? So uh, uh, why a model framework? Uh, why did we start thinking about it? Because in 2019, finally, after a long uh, uh, period of discussion, they uh, uh, standardized CCN with two RFCs, right? And these two RFCs basically describe about the behavior of, the, of CCN, and also the message formats of CCN. So now it is really standardized. So all this time, all these architectures and even the CCN the previous implementations had their own way of, of their own understanding of CCN. But now we have a standard that we could use to, to uh, build on. So that is why we wanted to build this model framework for our research because we have moved into many research areas, but still information centric networks or CCN is relevant, right? So I will, I will talk about them a little, little bit later. So what is CCN or in this context ICN because we, we, we use it interchangeably, right? Because ICN was the name for the whole family of architectures. But now CCN has become the primary architecture. So see, uh, so it, it, it is uh, uh, like being used interchangeably. So this is how uh, CCN works. So this, I, I hope to explain it from this graphic, right? So there are two parts to this graphic. The top part is how it works. And the second part, is, is the architecture of a CCN node, right? So in, in CCN, you have what are, what are called uh, consumers, routers, and producers. Consumers are like the people like us who are downloading some web pages or looking at a video. And the producer are nodes. So these are nodes in terms of nodes that I'm explaining, a node that host the content, where the web uh, content is there or the streamed videos are there. So what happens is that every consumer, when they know what they require, right, they send an interest out. An interest is a request. And this request gets propagated over the network to the consumer, uh, to the producer, sorry. And along the way, these interests leave 
bread crumbs like like in in the Hansel and Gretel uh, story they it, it leaves bread crumbs along the way and when the request gets to the producer the producer replies with the response and that is the content itself and this content will propagate back to the consumer consuming the breadcrumbs along the way so it will take the same path and will come back right now there are many variations for example since ccn emphasizes caching content it might be that this router might have been able to serve that content right because it might have been requested by somebody else before and it is cached now here so it will it can uh, uh, serve uh, the request so it doesn't have to go all the way to the producer right so this is the way ccn works request response so it's a kind of a pull kind of uh, architecture where the information is requested and nobody can flood anybody because there won't be any requests right only uh, it goes uh, along the path where requests have been made so the second part of this graphic is the node architecture right you know generally if you look at a publication of ccn you would see many layers but you can simply make it into a three layer architecture right at the top you have applications in the middle you have the forwarding which is done in a ccn way and then at the bottom you can have any kind of link technology or we generally call them transports right because it can also overlay uh, ip right but it is you know it is there to uh, replace ip but for for the for the immediate uh, uh, period you could you know overlay on top of ip right so we refer to all these as transports and to communicate like the ccn layer has interfaces to the applications to send content up when they come or to get interest the requests that come down or to the link technologies and in ccn specifically they are referred to as faces right because they have the same behavior irrespective of whether they are really going to the applications or to the uh, to the transport uh, that is used it has the same functionality what has it got to do either it, it it receives interest or it sends content objects right so upwards or downwards so they are all referred to as faces so this is the the very fundamental basic architecture of a ccn node right so to 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 sort of uh, summarize this you know in current networks we refer to them them as host based networks right ip is a host based network because whenever you want something you need to know the name of the server right so where the youtube uh, uh, videos are of course you have other mechanisms that are working but ultimately what you what you have is an address an ip address of a server and then what do you do you build a pipe to this server uh, a tls pipe right where you send uh, and receive information so this is how it works so what you need to know first is the name of the server to get to the information right and and then you have to create this pipe to uh, 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 send and receive information so what ccn does it turns this around and says we are not bothered where the content resides as long as we have the we have access to the content right so that is why it goes from named host to named data because we name the data rather than where the data is located right so the focus is on caching forwarding secure content right so you you don't need uh, uh, these these pipes because every piece of data is secured by themselves right they have all the security information and they can be cached or stored anywhere in the network because of of previous activity they get cached in the network right so this is the basic idea so 
to 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 summarize that idea so i said it is a pull kind of uh, uh, architecture it uses uh, uh, interests and content objects uh, request response right it has at the forwarding layer it has these these uh, uh, I, these structures right the pending interest table is basically the place where you keep the breadcrumbs right you keep a track of all the breadcrumbs and when the data comes back you know aha uh -huh, this was requested by uh, somebody uh, downstream so i need to send this data downstream right because the interest went up upstream and then you have what is called the forwarding information base where it keeps a track of who is serving content because when i get an interest i need to know where to send the interest so it keeps a track of all this information in the forwarding information and then if a node not all some nodes will also have the capability to cache content so content store uh, structure uh, does that and then you have the faces i i explained faces are simply interfaces to the application or to any kind of transport it could be a link technology like bluetooth or 15.4 or wireless lan or it could be uh, a transport like udp tcp it doesn't matter right as long as it has a means to get to another uh, ccn node and as i said the link can be a uh, uh, transport uh, uh, or uh, any kind of link technology so now i i hope it it sort of gave you an idea of of how ccn works and and you know a basic understanding we can talk if you have any yes. questions oh uh, sorry uh, i see uh, gabo has has uh, uh, Hand up. Yeah, it's um, sorry. Just a, a quick comment. I mean, the whole thing gives me vibes vibes of uh, a torrent network, basically, where you have uh, it, it is very, very much. I mean, to me, it looks like a P two P network where nodes can be seed servers of their own if they want to be, but not necessarily have to be. Is that like a good description of this thing? Uh, you know, the 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 origins of of uh, uh, CCN. Uh, you know, big torrent like behavior, mm -hmm. right? And also CDNs. You know, you 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 know about CDNs. You know, CDNs also have the same kind of you know where you hold some content somewhere. So you, but they still are built on top of IP. So you have all the problems of IP of looking, uh, finding the address where the content are, and then trying to secure this pipe because if somebody gets into the pipe. that's the end of it right so so the idea of 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 uh, well, actually in torrent the more people in the pipe the better but <laughs> i mean yes yeah, i mean the torrent uh, bit torrents have, have have a similar architecture but still it has the drawbacks of of being on top of ip of looking mm -hmm. for addresses and so on so all this you know uh, this was int introduced uh, uh, by by van jacobs and you know ccn and he and he used to call this lower parts the goop <laughs> I, i remember and and you know it's all this trouble that has to uh, be be you know uh, to to go over, through to to get to the content right so this you know gets rid of all that okay you can have a link technology directly of course if there is nothing you still have to have ip right uh, i mean if that is not possible but you are right it it has its origins in 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 bitorrents So, uh, so uh, sorry, Sangha. One more yeah. question, then I I, I will shut up. Um, just out, out of curiosity, how do you fill up the forward information base uh, oh. in 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 the routers? Is, yes. Is, is there like um, some something like a, a routing algorithm or something? Yes, like that? it is okay. absolutely. It is it is uh, like a, a routing table, right? So what do you do? You need to Uh, uh, people have to say that you know content are available in these places oh, okay right and they okay. the content hosters will say that and this information simply gets propagated and everyone can populate their uh, okay. forwarding information tables or the routing tables based on this information so there are many proposals how this can be done 
Okay, thank okay. you. But yeah, that's the idea. Sanas, yeah. Uh, my question is uh, when, uh, for example, two or three different nodes uh, send the same uh, interest for the same content to one router, then does it uh, save the data of all of them or just one of them? If it is one of them, then we have uh, more delay. If it's all of them, then uh, we have more cache saved there. And uh, that's what the first question. Yeah, okay. So, so when a request comes, let's say from downstream, so you have upstream and downstream, let's say. So maybe I, I uh, let me go back to this, uh, sorry, previous uh, graphic. So when a, when a content comes, let's say from downstream, right? So, uh, sorry, a request comes from downstream. What the, the this router does is that it, puts this entry into its pending interest table. It's just an entry saying somebody downstream is looking for this content because every content will be named. And, and then supposing another person sends from downstream. This also, let's say, comes to this router for some reason. It usually not because the other stream, other node would do it. Let's say it somehow from another downstream it got and request for the same content. Now, what this node does is that it, it first sees, oh, this has already been request, so it, it will simply increment and say, I will not forward this request because somebody has already requested and I have already forwarded the request further, right? So, but it keeps a track of who requested it. And when the data comes back, then, it will serve not only one downstream, it will serve both downstreams, right? This is how it works. Now, some of these nodes will decide to cache this content, the one that you got. So the next time another request comes, now you already have it in your cache. Okay. So, so then it can be served. Thank you. Okay, so coming back. So the node architecture, uh, we, so we, we have built this model framework, very, very simple, but, but very effective. Uh, we, we have considered because our intention was to use the information in these two RFCs to build an architecture so that we have a you know, solid uh, 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 model framework that really caters uh, to the behavior that is described in these RFCs. So we have a simple model framework, the three-layer model framework, uh, 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 node architecture, you would see, we have the applications at the top, the forwarding in the middle, and then the, tr the different transports, right? So I will just explain, of course, applications are self-explanatory here, content download, content uh, server, one is the, the one that runs on client to request content, the client node, and the content server is like a, a, an application that hosts content. Right, like for example, YouTube, right? It hosts all this content and when people request, they, they will be down. So these are two, two applications that we have written already. This is like very initial. We have not gone into like very complicated uh, applications like email or, or, or other, other, other complicated uh, uh, things, but this is just for us to know that this architecture works. And then uh, we have also what is called a prefix uh, advertise a very simple uh, application that really uh, distributes or disseminates prefixes of, of nodes, right? So this is where the information that when, when, when the content uh, server, uh, the content server that holds the content uses this uh, prefix advertiser to tell other people, hey, I have content with me with this information. So if you ever want, you send all your interest in my direction. There, there is no reference to any node, but only to the information. So that, you know, it gets propagated in the hierarchy and then the interest comes back, right? So these are the applications that we have at the moment, right? This this for, for testing. And the forwarding is based on the RFC uh, 8569. That this is the, the RFC that IE, IETF uh, uh, 
uh, standard uh, uh, published uh, uh, in 2019 describing the behavior. Of course, there is also this other RFC. I forget its name. That, that is the one that describes all the uh, message formats. So we try to conform to these two RFCs. And for transports, at the moment, we have this you know, conceptual transports like a wired transport and a wireless transport. We use you know, a simple uh, unit disk graph uh, uh, model to, 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 to handle wireless connectivity right, to an access point and uh, also for intermittent connectivity, right? Because you have, you know, uh, Bluetooth or, or Wi-Fi direct kind of uh, direct communication means. So all this is handled by the wireless transport, but we refer to them as transport. But if later we want to plug in, you know, uh, IP of INET, we can simply do that because it's all interface based. You simply have to do the translation and use that uh, uh, one of the IP uh, transports like TCP or UDP. And then, of course, we have mobility. For mobility, we depend on INET uh, mobility models, right? And then we also have this node global uh, uh, model to hold you know, global information. At the moment, we don't have, but we have made the provision uh, to hold some global information. Like later, uh, there might be instances this is uh, uh, required. And so this was the node architecture that I described. Now we have a set of different node models, right? So you could see these are the orange ones are wireless nodes that have wireless transports in there, right? And then you have a node model called the wireless access router, which is simply uh, uh, provides access to all these wireless nodes, right? They are all, you know, running the CCN protocol stack, right? But they are configured in different ways so that they can act as a wireless access router. And so these nodes can act as wireless nodes. And then we have content uh, core net, uh, core routers, right? Core routers are simply, you know, routing content this way or that way based on the prefixes they know of, right? So this is like, you know, similar to the to the root uh, routers in the core network of IP, right? And then on the right, you see content servers. These are the uh, uh, servers that host content and are willing to uh, uh, reply to content requests. And I have to also tell you that these core routers also can be caches, right? They can also cache content. So the next time the requests come, they don't have to forward, they might uh, answer from their caches. And then you have wired nodes, right? And then you have an access router concentrating these uh, wired nodes, CCN nodes, also similar to wireless nodes, but they're wired. And then we have another category of nodes, right? To do uh, for these intermittently connected networks like delay tolerant networks or opportunistic networks and so on, so that they are not permanently connected to networks, but they move all over, but they still have to do CCN, right? So they, they need to have, uh, they have the protocol, CCN protocol stack, right? But their, their transport connectivity is different from, from, let's say, the wireless or the wire, because they have, uh, they, they communicate with nodes when they meet, uh, so their neighborhoods change constantly, so they are this intermittently connected network. So we have uh, 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 node models, all having the same node architecture, but configured in, a, in different ways, right? So these are these node models, I, I just uh, described them there, right? Uh, so once you have all these node, nodes and the, the, the architecture and nodes, now you need to uh, uh, know exactly uh, what, what, what statistics or what metrics we use to evaluate. So the first metric, is, is the cash miss hit, hit miss ratios, right? That is basically uh, telling us how many hits were there for all the requests that came, because this tells us, you know, how well the, the caching policy works and so on, right? Similarly, there are many others, other metrics like uh, uh, download duration, how long it took for a download to happen of a content or of a segment, retransmissions, because you know, if nodes move, you know, the interest is lost, 
right? So you have to reissue an interest so that the, 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 the content can come back. So how many retransmissions? And also how many pit and, you know, the pit is where all the breadcrumbs are held. So if there are many breadcrumbs, that means like there is a problem in that part of the network because a lot of the content is not being served because your, your pit entry is increasing, right? Uh, pit uh, entries are increasing. So, so this is uh, an important uh, uh, metric to, even, uh, to, to see. So the next is, is you know, we, we, we did a very small performance. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh. Yeah, sorry, Asanga, to interrupt yeah. again. Um, just one quick question. The breadcrumbs that yeah. you uh, leave around in, uh -huh. in, in the network, uh, do they have like a timer or something like that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, RFC specifies that you need to time them out. They will last, never last forever. And it is, it is a configurable parameter. Uh, how it, it depends on, on many factors. Like, you know, I don't want to, a router might not want to hold a lot of uh, uh, breadcrumbs. Right? It might say, you know, my, 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 uh, uh, my, my space for this is limited. So either I use the timing mechanism or I use the limit, you know, the, the, the space limitation yeah. mechanism. Yeah. I, I was thinking that because you said that, of course, uh, nodes are mobile. So if uh, one node uh, issue a, a request in some uh, location of the network, then it, it goes away, then the router will not find the node again when it, it, it receives the content. Absolutely. This is one of the main problems that people are trying to find solutions for. There are many proposals, but they require some sort of, you know, uh, mechanism where you, you, you know, uh, try to uh, reach your ear by using your, uh, your, uh, the, the right ear with your left hand uh, kind of, you know, thing. So this is some of the uh, areas that we are looking at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. I have one question before we go on about caching. It's like um, most of internet traffic is now going on to uh, being encrypted. And I'm not sure if like, if we have an HTTPS channel only, I mean, if it is uh, theoretically encrypted between the server and the receiver. So how uh -huh. do you cache that for other people? So that would be excluding all that traffic or how do you have any information on how that would work? It, uh, okay, so you, you look from an IP point of view. Yeah, right? I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, uh, I, the, 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 I just want to stress that because in IP, you have a pipe and you have send this, this you, you secure the pipe basically. Mm -hmm. And then you send all the data in. But if somebody gets into this pipe, that's the end of the story. Right? So what CCN does is that every piece of data item that comes, all these content objects are secured by themselves. So every packet carries this secure information and they can be cached anywhere in the network. Right? So, so getting into one does not mean that you have access to all. Right? So, so this is basically the idea of, of, of CCN where you know, at the at the forwarding layer, you have things are packetized like in IP, but they are secure. They, there is data in them which are called segments. There are data in them where caches can simply uh, they, uh, 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 store them, and they are sequenced. So, if somebody wants, let's say, a PDF file later, the same PDF file uh, a document, you can request for that name. And somebody in the network might have cached this, right? And all the, you could sequentially request for these segments. And this is not possible with IP packets because IP packets, you, you don't know exactly what ultimately is going there unless, of course, you, you, you clearly know exactly what you want, right? So, so uh, uh, that is how CCN looks at uh, this, this uh, segmentation and security and, and caching. Well, I still have some open questions, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's uh, appropriate, but like if you have only part of say a document, let's refer to yes. the PDF, uh, cached at a given location, then uh -huh. 
I have trouble understanding how two different cache locations could uh, identify the same uh, receiver or the same, you know, content seeking uh, node uh -huh. uh, on an encrypted. Again, I'm using the encrypted channel uh, metaphor. Yeah. Right? That's uh, yes, yeah. what we uh -huh. However, if you have like the whole document, you know, cached at a given node, then you have a security problem. Whereas you have the whole PDF document. Let's say my my bank statement is cached somewhere in China, whatever, and I might not be so very uh, fond of that idea. Uh, you know, for to to begin with, of course, you can you you can have a mechanism where you don't you 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 are uh, you don't allow people to cache them. Right, but but you know, coming back to the basic problem that you were talking about, imagine this: every part of this PDF doc, forget about security. Let's say a PDF document is chunked into mm -hmm. segments, right? Oh yeah, I don't understand how that would work, work on like a torrent like, network. It would be like the exact yes. same so thing. So you have like a pieces yeah. there, pieces there, and then it would be assembled uh, at the. Um, receiver's end, right? Yes. That, that's clear. Um, what is not clear is how does, let's say we have uh, routers A and B caching parts of the document, uh -huh. uh, but let's say A router was, re the same PDF document it was requested from A router for uh, by client one, uh -huh. and B requested it uh, from client two. Uh -huh. And then how does A router know that client two is also needs uh, parts of that document when they are encrypted uh, messages. So it, it theoretically, it should not be able to read the contents of the packet. Yeah, absolutely. It is It is not the content because this, this information, the name of the doc, name of this content or segment plus the sequence number is part of the header of the message, right? Mm -hmm. So it, when, when a request comes to me with the name and the segment, I check in my cache and check whether, oh, is it there in my cache? If it is there, I serve that, right? If not, I use the forwarding information base and forward it further to where uh, it may be. Mm -hmm. So this is how it, it simply goes you know, back and it, it comes back to the node. And when it comes to the node, it is- so You could have like a hash uh, being stored in the network for that and, given file and then that would- Absolutely. Be so at the moment, people are talking in terms of hashes. You don't need to want to keep like a, a, a long name. So you, every con every segment can have a, you know, bloom filters work uh, very nicely in this, this context. So people are talking of bloom filters where you have, you know, hashes. Uh, that uniquely identify a certain uh, uh, segment. Okay. Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, Sanas, you wanted to ask something, or you had? My question was answered when you were speaking. Ah, okay, good. Yeah. So I, I will go quickly uh, uh, to the. Oh man, it's ten o'clock already. Are we finished? We are finished, right? <laughs> Because I, we have to also go back to the. Yeah, yeah actually, uh, we still have half an hour for uh, until the next. Yeah, yes, we, so. we have the, the the coffee break in theory, but we can. Okay, go sorry, sorry, I, I didn't uh, note that. Okay, let me finish quickly. Then we are going to coffee for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. good. So, so, uh, so in the performance evaluation, I, I just use the a very simple scenario. We have. Uh, a couple of wireless nodes, a couple of wired nodes, right? Uh, some content servers serving content and some core routers that are forwarding and caching uh, uh, in this network. So it's a very simple network because we just wanted to only check the operation. So what we did was we configured it. Uh, we, we evaluated three scenarios where each scenario had a different content catalog size, right? So uh, some had a high amount of content, some had medium amount of content, and some had low uh, uh, amount of content, right? So this is our simple evaluation scenario. The, the INI file shows you that, you know, these are, this is a very, you know, dumb uh, uh, evaluation, but just to look at the concept. Now in this, you see the results we got. The first, it was well, the, the one that I was looking at was the cash hit ratio, right? So you see when the content 
uh, catalog is uh, less diverse, right? You have uh, what we refer to as low content diversity. Low means there is less content uh, in the network. Then the hit ratio increase increases. Why? Because now the request. You know, the, the space of the amount of requests that you can send are limited, right? Because the catalogs are, the catalog is smaller. So that means there is always a possibility of the content being somewhere uh, in the network, right? So therefore, the hit ratio is higher. When the content catalog is very diverse, so the requests now, because the requests are all random, Right, so there are more uh, 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 area to uh, or space to to request. So that means there is highly uh, likely that many of the contents have not been cached. So they have to go all the way to the content server to get the content. So this is what we refer to as content diversity, like how much of content you have, and then the requests. Will will try to pull this content, and along the way to the content, uh, there might be many misses, right? Because you know the caches or the 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 core routers in the middle might not have cached this content. So because of that, uh, for highly diverse uh, content catalogs, the delivery ratio, uh, sorry, the hit ratio will be lower, and for uh, with low uh, catalogs uh, that have low content diversity, I mean less content, then the delivery, uh, the hit ratio might be higher because uh, uh, there is a likeliness that the content uh, are available. The second graph is also this from the same, but just wanted to see how it progressed over simulation time. You see, at the beginning, everyone has a very uh, a zero cache uh, uh, hit ratio because nobody has the content. But gradually, as it progresses, the caches build up, and then they somehow always is able to serve content in a certain way. But of course, when the content catalog is high, it takes a long time to, to stabilize, uh, to, uh, uh, to come to an, a certain equilibrium of, of uh, sending content. So this is basically a, a simple evaluation of, of uh, a C, a CCN. Right, so I mean, not very extensive, but just to get give the idea how the caching works and and what uh, implications it has. So I want to summarize and uh, uh, the work now. Uh, so what we did, you know, uh, to to we began with saying why CCN is important because now networks have gone in the direction of you know moving content rather than you know. Uh, the way that it was originally meant for. So it's it's all about content, back and forth, right? So CCN has this uh, concept of naming data, naming content instead of uh, what we have in current networks, named hosts. So CCN has become important because of the two new RFCs that came about, right? So, so uh, people are looking extensively into now because I have seen many areas where CCN is, is becoming important uh, uh, because of it being standardized. So therefore, we, we thought of building a, a model framework to cater to exactly to this particular requirement, meaning uh, handling the behavior as described by these RFCs, right? The code is available at GitHub. So for the future work, like we have a lot that we have listed, but I have only put some of them. You know, immediately we want to have better caching policies. You know, people, there are many caching policies uh, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, CCN, uh, but we have used a very simple caching policy. The RFC doesn't tell us to use any particular caching policy. It doesn't matter for the RFC. RFC says that you could use any caching policy as, as long as you can serve a content or you, you are able to forward uh, the request further, right? So caching uh, uh, doesn't matter for what caching policy. So we need to fix caching policy. And prefix dissemination. Giovanni, you asked this question. So there are uh, uh, um, uh, uh, 
there are no standards yet, but only proposals of how these prefixes are uh, uh, made aware uh, to the uh, in the whole network. How do you do that? Like you know, you have a messaging mechanism, or what? What do you do? So there are many proposals. So we want to you know bring our model framework up to date with the the, the best uh, policies of of you know caching, uh, prefix dissemination, and uh, managing uh, uh, the, the 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 pit and so on. Right. So, so these are some of the immediate things that we are looking at on a long term basis. Like we have to find solutions for this intermittently connected network. You already uh, asked this question. When a node moves, what happens to the request? There are many, many solutions, as I said, but they require, you know, extensive work. And ultimately, they go back to host centric networks. You know, <laughs> they break the content centric and they because the solutions are finally saying, okay, now the node has moved here. So now nodes have identities. So now you have to, you know, so it, 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 it's not the best of uh, way of ways of doing it, right? So we want to look at that. And, you know, sensor networks are one area that, that uh, CCN will be really good because, you know, sensor networks are simply information network. You know, you need to pull information from sensors all over and send. So, so this is like an area that is really useful. Vehicular networks, I see a lot of research using uh, in vehicular network CCN. So this is also something uh, that we want to look at, but I mean, these are for the long term, but generally first we want to make sure that we have a solid uh, uh, implementation before we go into the, the major research. So that was all, you know, uh, if you have a thank you for listening, uh, the patients, uh, uh, having the patients. So if you have any other questions, I will be very glad to answer. Yeah, uh, one question I have, yeah. uh, uh, Asanga, is that um, what is the relation, for example, to interplanetary fire system and stuff like this? Because that that's also looks something like this. Maybe it's just a special case for this stuff. Uh, yes, uh, I think interplanetary, uh, these file systems are sort of... Uh, meant to take into consideration the intermittentness, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, yeah. you, they have to yes. be yeah, absolute. So th these are, you know, th this kind of category was came as DTN, delay tolerant networks, and, and this, this interplanetary file systems and so on have come out of this, this kind uh -huh. of research area, where you have uh, delay tolerance in, the, in, in, in terms of uh, storing information. Right, but, but generally they fall into DTN. But DTN itself is is you know like opportunistic networks, like a like a caching system, mm -hmm. right? But they still have to work on top of IP where you need IDs and so on. So mm -hmm. even for for interplanetary or, or DTN like uh, communications, you can use CCN because of course CCN has this problem of uh, uh, you know when you move to a new location. What is how would the, the content be? So these are something that uh, you know. Of course, the 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 basic thing that you could do is you can reissue the request, right? You have a timeout and you say, hey, I'm now in a new location. Please send this content again to me. That is always there, right? That works without any problem. If it is highly mobile, you have to think, you know. Uh, constantly not being able to stay in one place would be a major problem, but but generally CCN still works for any kind of mobility because you simply go to a new location, you reissue the request, and you will get the data back uh, to that location. Of course, the data will also go to the old location, but who cares? And the, the network can cache there uh, or uh, drop it, but. This is not enough in the uh, you know the way we use networks. So we need to find better solutions where the original request is not timed out, but still will be able to find the data or bring the data back to the new location of the user. Uh -huh. So so this is you know uh, some, some still research areas. And uh, an additional question related to the mobility. You mentioned that it's based on INET mobility. I mean the yes. framework itself. And uh, are you using INET directly or it's a completely independent framework and just copied the mobility models mm -hmm. or what is the connection? 
yeah, uh, we, we don't copy anything into uh, uh, the framework. We just make sure we ask people or in the, in the installation that you have to have INET and it uses the interfaces of the iMobility uh -huh. uh, interface. <clears throat> So it's it's a kind of model which uh, links to INET. Yes, it, case, yeah, it is, absolutely. It links to INET. And I, since you are talking of this, I was talking with Andras yesterday, and Andras was saying that you have this idea of splitting INET yeah. into 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 sort of uh, 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 generic functionality and very INET. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, IP so, specific stuff. Yes. So I, I am for that. I told him that I am for that because, you know, then we don't, you know, mobility, he was saying mobility also can be part of this generic thing because mobility is something that is required not only in IP, but yeah. in many other places. So if you split it into two, the, 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 the sort of um, the, 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 the library that we have to link with will be really smaller because mm -hmm. it will be this generic, of course, it is dynamic, but still then... Yeah, INET is quite a big of yes. chunk of projects, and if you are just uh, carrying it to have mobility, it's it's a kind of overblown. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that thank is, you. That is, yeah, okay. Anga, one more question from me. Yes. Uh, in the beginning, you said that CCNs can be put on top of IP as well, if you yes. want. Uh, in your model, can you simulate it? Uh, yeah. In the sense that, okay, so we have this interface to a transport. So what yeah. we would have to do is we would have to write a transport model that uses IP to set up connections to other uh, uh, okay. IP transports. So okay. we, we haven't done that, but I mean, it's a matter of uh, using IP, like having IP connections to, to send data. So we write our own transport. So the transports can be, you know, plugged in uh, as, as, as uh, uh, when, when you want. Uh, that's how it is architecture. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Okay, great. I think yeah. we can go go to the main room there. Main room, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for Thanks. listening. And yeah, it thank was you. a nice uh, uh, answer.